just put a link to like your Facebook, so we like find the pictures and stuff. And then, like, it's not required. It's not it's required. Not required. <laughs> I should have had the vet let us do a taxidermy. <laughs> That would have been awesome. I'd, well, you could have had it sitting in your class, like on the table, just to creep students out. That would have been great. I actually had talked about that a, year, a long time ago when I... It's really expensive to get taxidermy. Well, not as expensive as I've already spent on this thing. Like a couple hundred dollars at least. I want to get a taxidermy dog. <laughs> so weird. Not even your dog. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't like pets. You don't like pets because they've been outside. No, because they're <laughs> annoying and... I don't see any benefit from having a pet. Then why would you want to stuff the dog? Because he's creepy. Don't have any, yeah, it's creepy. What do, you, I, what do you mean? What do you mean you don't see a benefit? You're talking about these finger monkeys. And the, what you can enjoy it from playing with them. Well, you just said you don't have any. You can enjoy it from playing with dogs. Dogs are annoying. My last dog was really stupid. I don't think so. How do you know that these finger monkeys aren't like total jerks? I've seen videos. And they're, they're like crawling around on your fingers. Case, yeah, until they like bite one of your nails cage. off. Just put them in your cage when they time out. What kind of cage could hold that? You have to put them in a fish tank. <laughs> no, like a bird cage would be fine. No, they'll fit right through the bars. I'll just put like a fishing net over it or something. Why don't, wouldn't you just get an aquarium with the glass walls? It makes sort of sense. It does. It makes a lot more sense. <laughs> it's like a where they have the big tall tanks and then they have the branches and stuff. Yeah, yeah, you can have your little yeah, dude in there swinging, so but he can be in one of the little tanks for betas. It's like you have your base, your own monkey exhibit. I saw this one company that they asked people for a whole bunch of different views or pictures of your animal, and then they'll make a stuffed animal that looks exactly like your pet for $200. Uh, stuffed, stuffed or a... Stuffed animal, not the See, like, pet. Okay, it was... Like, they'll look exactly like huh. your pet. But the problem is, is I've heard people, like, they would do reviews on this company, and their kids would get really upset after keeping the animal, the stuffed animal, for a little while. So it would just, you know, make them feel really bad with it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I already have a stuffed Gracie and Sissy, you know, like a cat that Looks is a like grayish cat and a blackish cat. But they look like exactly No, I get it. I get it. Yeah, that would probably upset my wife. So you're cool with taxiderming other people's animals and just having that as your pet. You're like talk to it over in the corner, like all creep like. Yeah, and then like, well, it'd be good in college because you could like just freak your roommates out with it too. And you're probably like the type of guy who like name them like like professional names, like you know, <laughs> Doctor Simpson or something like that. <laughs> oh, that's Doctor Simpson, MD. It's like that's a that's a taxidermy dog. <laughs> What? Medical degree. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can have them on campus too because you can't have pets here. It's only multiple problems. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Except you're going to have to pay for a double room because you won't have a roommate. <laughs> or you can scare them out and then you have a room to yourself. Well, I guess that's true. That's what happened with one of my sons last year. They like so you, you, get, you get the half of the room paid for and then you creep them out so they leave. Yeah. yeah that makes sense. Or because of him. <laughs> there was an email that went out yesterday from Mr. Taylor where they changed some of the student code of conduct. I saw the hoverboards. <laughs> Well, of course, I, they told me that was already in the student code for it. Yeah, it fell underneath the skateboard clause, I guess. Oh, but that's not a skateboard. That's what I argued. But <laughs> to what end? Until they put in the student code of conduct. They did it anyways. Now you can't, but you could have. I've been using it to dry off after the hot tub. All right, so. Um, our goal here for the homework assignment was to mechanically get things to move, right? We're not playing the game or anything of like that. We're just mechanically having something removed from one of these views and uh, pop into another one of these guys based on our pushes and our pops. 
So we're going to start off by, uh, we wrote the code last time to add something to this. So let's go back into here. So we have our um, uh, on start. We went ahead and we added some disks of a certain size to our tower, right? So that's the current state of our tower. So now let's go ahead and learn how to remove a disk from the tower. So we're going to come in here. This is our uh, tower fragment, these guys. Here's our add disk. All right. So this is our actual. Uh, let's see. Do you ever use the disk label? That was a test we were doing, right? We never actually used the disk label, did we? Oh, no, we did. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because we, we set the, the text to the size of the disk, right? Oh, no, no, no. We did the uh, underscores, the number of underscores for it. There it is. That's the underscores. Okay. Um, so, this is, we go ahead and we inflate our disk. We set the uh, disk label itself. Um, then we um, uh, put it, the underscores in there, or whatever. Uh, then we remove the button, because we had to kind of put these in in the right order. So we took the button out, we put the disk in, then put the button back in to get it to show up in the right, the right way. So this is visually representing our stack of disks. Now, to remove a disk, let's actually call this a pop disk. We're going to have a, um, we'll just say pop disk because we want to pop the disk off the top of the stack, right? Okay, so what's the thing we're popping the disk off of? We're popping the disk off of this dot tower layout, right? And our tower layout is our vertical linear layout. And we can remove a view. Specifically, we can tell it the view we want to remove, right? So I have the disk down here. Couldn't I store that disk inside here? Couldn't I specifically store a stack of disks? All right, so let's start off by just storing uh, an array of disks for right now, okay? Okay, uh, let's see, where are we? okay, so let's just, we'll put it up here inside of our tower fragment. So a tower fragment is going to keep track of his stack of disks. But we're going to keep it in a, just an array right now just so we can make this work. Um, in fact, let's just do a um, view top disk. And then we'll go ahead and say, Top, uh, we'll say this dot top disk is equal to disk. So whatever was the last disk we added, we'll go ahead and just set this one single variable called top disk to that. All right, and then we should be able to then remove it now that we have access to that. So we'll remove a view this dot top disk. All right. So, and then we have our fragment. Uh, we have, oh, on click up here, right? So this guy uh, toggles, uh, right now we're toggling the tower button. We also can go ahead and say, um, let's see, what do we call it? Tower layout dot remove you top disk. So when we hit that button, we'll go ahead and remove our view top disk. So we don't need to, actually, let's call pop. That's probably the better way of doing it. Pop disk, which effectively does what I just said. All right. So when we click the button, we'll toggle it, and we'll pop a disk. So this should make the disk disappear is the, the plan, right? There's our stack. We hit pop. 
and actually the wrong disk popped. We wanted the top one to pop. So because of the order we added it, hold on, what order did we add it? Oh, it's because of the order it gets put in. So well, that's okay. We saw that it, it removes what it thinks is the top of the stack, the last disk that was added, which is going to be, let's go back to our stack activity. So we, yeah, the last disk we added was the the, the 10. So it, it, it removed the disk we wanted it to remove, but not necessarily the disk we expected it uh, to remove. So now what we need to do is we need to create a stack of disks, okay? So what I'm gonna do, if we look at our stack here, is our stack data structure. We notice our stack data structure is fairly simple. We have our linear layout. Um, we can peak, pop, push, and these are taking in string values right now, right? Okay. But if we are working with a stack, of layouts. So now instead of a stack of strings, we have a stack of linear layouts. Okay, or, 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 or just, yeah, it would be a linear layout in this case. So what we're going to do is we're going to implement a new kind of stack. We'll start off by doing this in kind of a, uh, a brute force way. Um, let's see. Well, maybe we just do this. I'll teach you something handy. Uh, so we're going to go to, where, where, where? let's close this. Let's close this. We're going to go to Stack X. You know, we're going to go to um, Tower Fragment. And we're actually going to create a private stack um, from java.util, one of these guys. So I'm going to teach you about the built-in stack class in Java. We've learned about linked lists. We've implemented a linked list. We learned about stacks. We implemented a stack. Now we can use Java's built-in stack to hold. Notice this guy allows us to hold generic types. So I'm going to create a stack of, and we could import uh, java.util, Stack. I'm surprised that it didn't have us do that, but oh, it's because I'm going to have a conflict with this one. Um, so, actually, let's just do. Can I can I delete that? Actually, let's just refactor it, and we'll rename it, and we'll call this guy string stack, which should then allow us to create a private variable here. So private stack of um, linear layouts called the disks. And this is going to be a new stack of linear layouts like that. And notice here it has imported. Uh, well, it should have imported Java. Do we have util already imported? Oh, thank you. So this imports everything from java.util. All right, so that's where this guy lives, is inside of java.util. All right, so linked list lives in there as well. So we have access to stack and linked list right now. So you can use either one of those. But what's nice is this is something known as a generic. So by definition, by default, if we just create a normal stack, it holds objects of any type. So when we take things out of it, when we pop something off the stack, it goes in as a linear, or it goes in as an object. So it will come out as an object. Even though we put a linear layout in there, we would have to typecast it back to a uh, linear layout. Well, since we defined it as generically storing linear layouts. We put it in as a linear layout, it will come out as a linear layout, precast to the, the right type. All right, so this is using Java's built-in stack data type to um, store our stuff. So we have, we am call this guy the disks. So every single time, we, do we get rid of top disk? We did, good. So whenever we create a disk, 
we're going to go ahead and say this dot the disks dot push and this guy is expecting look notice a linear layout because of the way I built it I built it with those angle brackets generically saying you hold linear layouts you're not a normal stack you're a linear layout stack so I'm going to push my disk onto that now I think we're still going to end up being uh, um, uh, we're still going to end up being upside down here and instead of linear layouts we're going to actually hold views because that's what we actually need it as right is a view so we'll just update this guy up here he's no longer linear layouts now he's a stack of views come on you got this all right so now he's a stack of views we'll fix that here in a minute so we can push on to that stack that guy and then what we can do is we can uh, when we remove a view we can say um, this dot the disks dot pop that's the thing we want to remove make sense so pop remove something from the stack making the stack shorter push add something onto the top of the stack although I think right now our stack is actually upside down so we're gonna have to treat this guy a little a little different so we probably won't be able to use our push and pop directly we'll have to do a remove end and so it, it'll work out but we'll we'll have to just because of the way our, our interface is being built so now we should be able to pop off our stack uh, upside down <laughs> so, So this is actually an inverted stack. So when we pop, taking it from the bottom, all right, so we're able to remove stuff from our stack. So what we actually need to do here, and uh, so let me just do something. This dot, the disks dot, do we have a remove? have a size we do okay all right <laughs> we can we can fake this so our version of pop disk is going to say view disk to pop is going to equal this dot I'm sorry um, yeah this dot the disks dot remove uh, that guy's going to return a view. Um, what location? We're going to remove location. This dot the disks dot size minus one. Okay, so the size of a stack is like the length of an array. This tells us how many elements are in it. So when our stack is full, the size will be three. Legal buckets are zero, one, two. Make sense? All right. So effectively, because our stacks are upside down, the top of the stack will be removing the last element in the stack. So instead of removing front, we're actually removing end. But because I called it a stack, I can't actually call remove end or remove front from our linked list. If we want to make this more generic, we can call this, uh, well, here, let me just show you this work first. And then we'll make it a little bit uh, easier for us to work with by creating a linked list. And we can just, instead of calling push pop, we'll call remove end um, instead of remove front. Row, row. Uh, but once I remove it, it should be gone. It should be out. Just to pop. Oh, oh, I'm still calling pop. So yeah, this this is gonna have uh, problems. So that's the guy I want to actually remove. I was doing extra <laughs> extra modifications to my stack. Oh, 
Come on. You got it. And I suspect if I do this again, bad things happen. It's, it's, there's nothing to pop. <laughs> All right. So let's make this a little more generic for us so we don't have to mess with size. Since we're accepting the fact that what we actually have here is an upside down stack, the most convenient way of working with this will be to use, um, oh, here we need to, I need to refactor our linked list here as well. So this, we're going to rename um, string linked list. And that should fix it and all the rest of our, we talked about refactoring last time, right? So nice and convenient. Uh, that way we can use our linked list here and it goes ahead and does the java.util version of that guy. All right, and this is going to be a linked list. View. All right, so this is our java.util linked list, which has all of those generic linked list methods. Add front, add end, remove an index, all that stuff. Okay. So traditionally, when we think about popping, what we're actually thinking about doing is removing from the front, but since we have an upside down stack, we're going to remove last. Make sense? So we're effectively creating a stack. So this is nice and convenient. Now that we've written a linked list and we've written a stack, now we can we're allowed to now leverage Java's built-in things for that, which allow us to quickly create linked lists and stacks of kind of whatever we want. Okay, probably still going to break because we just tried to remove a null. So we do need to protect this a little bit. So when we say pop disk, we need to first ask this dot the disks dot size greater than zero. So as long as we have a disk to, to pop, we'll pop it. Okay. And so we're storing it inside this variable and we're going to actually pop it. Okay. Now, when we pop a disk, this is removing it here. We're visually removing it, but we need to go ahead and stage the disk we just popped someplace else so that we can actually push it to another tower. That makes sense? Okay. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to create another function inside here called void push disk. And this guy is going to take a view. Well, let's call it view disk as a parameter. And uh, at least for right now. And then we'll go ahead and say, uh, um, this dot, uh, the disks dot add first disk. This is an upside down stack, right? So we'll add to the beginning of it. Actually, no, we're adding to the end of it, add last. It's upside down. So remove from the end, add to the end, just like before we should be removing and adding to the front. So this is in code, adjusting our internal representation of our stack, right? But now we also need to represent our visual stack. So this is keeping our internal stack updated. So what we need to do now is we need to do effectively this logic okay, by adding a view. So I'm going to steal this logic here for a second. And I want to see if I can do something here. So we're going to say this dot add. Uh, oh, no, I want this dot tower layout dot add. Oh, add view at index. Ooh, this could be helpful. And we want this guy.
So we need to give it the view we want to add, which is going to be a disk, and then we need to give it the index. So we actually want to add this guy at, let's try zero. And let's go ahead and, well, let's, we'll test this out. So what we need to do is when we pop a disk, we need to go ahead and set probably something in our core, our tower core. So we're going to have static view popped disk. Option enter. Oh, there we go. All right, so static view pop disk, and uh, we'll start that guy off as null, but we're going to reset it. So when we pop a disk here from our tower fragment, we'll go ahead and set toh core dot popped disk equal to the disk that we just popped. So now we know about it as a global. When we hit our button, right now, we're always popping the disk. Now we can ask the question, what does this button say? Is don't we toggle our buttons in Tower Core? We pass it ourself, and toggle button changes from source to push. So if it currently says source, then we need to pop a disk. If it currently says push, then we need to add a disk, right? So there's our, that's our, our, our toggle. So inside of our tower fragment, before we just haphazardly decide what we're going to do here, we're going to ask the question, if, let's go ahead and get our um, button B is equal to the button version of the view. So this is the guy who called the on click, which we know will be a button. And then we can say if view or if v dot, I'm sorry, if b dot get text dot equals, um, what do we call it? Source, all caps. If it's equal to source, we'll pop the disk. Else, we need to push a disk. What disk are we going to push? TOH core dot popped disk. And in any case, we'll go ahead and toggle our buttons right now. So when we pop, it removes it visually, also removes it from the stack internally, sets our global variable that's available to all of our tower stacks. Then when it should, all the other guys should change to pop, or change the push rather. So then when we hit one of the push buttons, it should take that guy and add him. So let's go ahead and try that. So rut row something died so pop oh hold on they all say pop to begin with don't they okay so if it currently says pop we need to toggle um, yeah so this is pop Yeah, we'll have to flip it again. So we'll reset that. Let's just get the mechanic of moving it from one tower to another updated here. Oh, 
Okay, so let's let's set a breakpoint here and debug this. So on click, we get our button. Let's just make sure that that's working. Find out what's connection refused. That's good. Oh, did it just not tell me it finished running? Nice. <laughs> All right. Perfect. All right. So we go ahead and get our button. Let's step over this guy. Let's step into, is this step over? This is step over. So far, so good. Here's our button B. Um, we have a text setting in here. All right, well, in any case, they should all be pop right now. Let's see if it agrees with that. Oh, there's the step. Where's the step over? I want step over. No, oh, that's the step over. Okay, so it did not read it as pop. Get text. But we don't toggle till down here. This is where it actually gets set. So this is not identifying it as pop. Like, is it not all caps? Here, we, we should be able to do this. Equals. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I think we need to say to string dot equals ignore case. I, I actually think it was because it wasn't a string. I think that was the issue. Not so much that it wasn't equal to pop. But now we'll equal ignore case. It should work this time. Stack, pop, push, pop, oh, because oh, we're not doing it more than once, so we're, single mechanic has functioned, okay, <laughs> so we, 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 got, we got that guy covered, okay, so now we're able to go back and forth one time, so after we have, uh, if we pop a disc, and then we push a disc, so popping should do a toggle, pushing should do a toggle, else, uh, actually, hold on, pushing should do a reset. That's effectively what it should do, right? So let's go to our core, and really we want to do like a, uh, let's see. Oh, I get it. I was wondering why we were passing that parameter in there. So we're going to call this reset tower buttons. And we'll go ahead and create our same little array of towers. And then we'll steal this. 
and each time through we'll go ahead and set the button to pop So that should reset the towers ready for another move. You know, if we really wanted to be explicit about it, we could also say, uh, what is it? Popped disk is equal to null. Not necessary, but if we want to fully reset the event, that logically tells us the disk that was previously uh, popped has been placed. Therefore, it's no longer needed to... Uh, um, in fact, actually, we could do that when we do uh, push disk. Uh, we're pushing it there. So here's our push disk. We should probably just do toh core dot pop disk equal to null right there. We'll push it. We'll set it back to null because we don't, uh, you know, it's now it has found a new home which means we don't need to actually set it to null here. This guy's job is just to reset the towers, which effectively says set the text back. So now we come back into our tower fragments, and we toh core dot that, and that should well, actually, that's not where we're doing it. We're doing it after we push. We toggle after we um, pop. So pop, we toggle, push, we push it, we reset pop disk, and then we reset the tower buttons ready for another move. So now we should be able to get these guys to move around the, the place. So pop, push, pop, push, pop, push, pop, push, pop, push, pop, push. All right, so, except I, it doesn't know I've won. <laughs> okay, so um, we will come back on Tuesday and finish writing the logic for uh, this guy um, to actually run our game. And then we want to look at uh, a quick implementation of a queue, and then we want to get into trees, tree data types. All right, but uh, I have to take my wife to the dentist, so we're, but so no homework, right? But we're going to have uh, a farewell. farewell. The names are Gracie and Sissy. Gracie and Sissy. All right. I will see everybody on Tuesday.